Hello and Proclamation, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing the NUMA Player version 2 that came out. A version 1 on my Windows 7. Version 2 will not work on Windows 7, so it's on my Windows 11, which I was going to put on anyways. And we'll go through the sounds and stuff so that you can see. It's basically piano and strings. But it's really good to have it in your arsenal. It's free. I think you do have to sign up for an account. And I already had an account with them, if I remember correctly. Here it is on the internet. Their web page is right here. I have the link down below. When you go to download for Windows and Mac OS, it's a download desktop. Yeah, log into your account to start the downloads. Now I'm using Trez, and I actually bought the full version. I did a video on the demo. You can just pick something and start writing a song. I felt that if I start writing songs with the demo, I might as well buy it. It was half off, I think. Maybe not quite. It was like $79. It's my last drum program. So this is what Trez sounds like. Now, I'm using 2 a.m. in Toronto. I have the tom muted. It's just to lay down a basic beat. And then if you want to tweak things later on, you can. I have it bounced down here as the audio file. And this is Numa Player. And I haven't used it in quite a long time. Let's look at it. Cusic Pianos. Here's Model D 1983. So there's your tone. I like the tone all the way up. Just sounds better. I mean, down is bright. Well, eh. I'm just playing white keys, as you can see. If you play all white and all black, you're fine. When you start playing white and black, then you start sounding like an amateur guard artist. Here's duplex, damper noise. So we got model F2000. And that's pretty bright there. The upright, I think, is the one I like. So let's see if we can get this going. I always have a hard time when I go to play. You have to have your focus on the main window. And there is a shortcut in Reaper for that, but I never got it to work, where it's the focus is supposed to go back into the range view. And it'd be nice to have a shortcut where you hit that, and you're back in the focus of range view. Otherwise, you're not recording anything. Okay, let's see what we're looking at here. Those two and bring them on around here. Maybe there? Hmm. Maybe a little more closer. I'll have to speed it up because I was playing with the MIDI for too long. I got sidetracked. Happens a lot. 
-hmm. And if I look on over there, it's because they got OBS on the other monitor. And it's just, you know, it's a habit of looking at the screen instead of looking at the camera. So the upright is pretty good. If you're looking for a panel sound, I don't see a way to... Because, see, you can intermix things, but then it's like, well, how do you, you know, get rid of it? You just turn it off. So this sounds like... It's an EP Mark 1. Here's an EP Mark 2. Wooly 200. Depends on what you want to come up with. No, that's not bad. Yeah, your typical electric piano there. The EP3, I remember listening to it, that sound on early jazz albums like ECM records. Yes, back in the days. And you got a big thing called LP, not this small thing called CD. We got keys. Here's Clara Bonnet. Harp C. Vibe. Try putting that in a rap song or hip hop. You could do it. I know that someone out there can do it. Start your music with this. Anyways, I should put the MIDI down there. People who remember your song, good or bad, they will remember the song. Oh, man, not this song again. They're playing it on the radio again? You got all your sound controls. Oh, you got a chorus. Okay, I'm going to reset this to default because we'll be playing with my favorite section of this which I've used it in the past for. And it, I forgot all about it, to be honest, until they came up with a new version, and that strings and pads. The strings and pads are very nice. In fact, I'm going to take my MIDI, put it back in. One thing I've noticed lately when I go to play with Flanger with some VSTs, if you keep it minimalist on the settings, it can like double the sound or even widen the sound. And I never used Flanger that much in the past. Here's the chorus on it. Yeah, minimalist settings. Go as small as you can. I don't think the phaser sounds as good, but I do. I, I like the. Now 
Now, I'm not a professional pianist. I'm a free improviser, though. And free improvisers, we go off key. String section. See, what I do is I just get some sort of a group going and then I just improvise and let it go along. I don't loop. I just let it go. Make sure that the drums go. I mean, I'll go as far as five minutes. It also gives you the chance to find a place where you were playing really good. It sounded really good. And you can cut, take that, and start working on it into a song. Free improvisation is very essential, I think, for music making. Synth pad. Kind of. More lower frequency sense for me is a little more difficult to work with. I don't know why. It's just adding more to the low end frequency where the kick and the bass should be. So definitely we have to use the EQ to make it better. Here's flanger. But I'm not going to play too much with synth pad. That was synth pad too. Again, it's eaten up some low end. So for myself, it's always been strings, ensemble, and it's just good to have in your arsenal. If you have a VST that only does one good thing, there's nothing wrong with it, to be honest. It's a lot better than going through a lot of presets, trying to find something. Acoustic pianos, it was the upright. Those two are really the best, I think. Trying to see if. Oh no, I don't want to do that. What's that there? Oh, I duplicate it? Why in the world would I want to duplicate it for? No. Oh, I know. You got settings for each one. There we go. You got the whole the key. So you can play it on different keys. There's C5, C8. What if I went... So if you want to get a different mood, you just change the, like the upper key of one. Ooh, we can transpose. Well, you can change the upper and lower keys so one isn't stepping on the toes of the other one. Effects. 
We've been EQ. Here we go. Yeah, that's bassy on the piano. If you want the strings or the pad to blend into the background. So that's not too bad. Timing needs to be taken care of on the MIDI, I know, but we're in creative mode. Here's the master. You got delay. Oh, you already got a reverb on? You can change the BPM. What should we change it to? Is that changing the BPM of the delay or the sound? It doesn't sound like doing anything. Let's put it back on 120. Looks like the reverb was on already. There's just their slight reverb and delay, which is actually good because that's all it should be is just adding flavor to the sound. So I hope you have a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you may be, and I will see you in the next video.